Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another monumental episode of Red Pill Tamales. The show is growing thanks to you guys. Shout out to all the patrons. If you are not a patron, hit us up, patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. I'm your host, Chingo Blingo with the Big Tamarindo, producer Rob in the building. Hey everybody. Making it happen. So I just got back from Killeen, Texas and Lubbock, Texas. Yeah. Stand-up comedy. Uh, impressive crowds. Um, did you know that in Lubbock, they have their own strain of chlamydia? <laughs> it's called Raider Rash. Because <laughs> of the Texas school? Tech, Texas Tech Red Raiders. Texas Tech Red Hey, but that is neither here nor there. Uh, we had a very uh, long road trip. And I'm not complaining about being cooped up in a car with my pregnant wife across, you know, this huge landmass called the free state of Texas. That's right. But uh, it was magnificent, man. We stopped at every Bucky's gas station. I'm rocking a hat from Bucky's right now, the Don't Mess With Texas. My Willie Nelson shirt. I'm feeling good. Okay. Comedy is back. Texas is back. Um, amazing, man. We, we've we been gone for a few days. I, I don't even know how to act. I'm not even used to being on stage and shit. Like, what the fuck? So when you go out of town and you're on stage, what's the first thing you say? Do you say, do you say something like initially? Because I feel like when you get up on stage every time in every city that you've, you're revisiting now, you're just yelling like, we're back, baby. Freedom's oh, back. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, think about it, man. Stand-up comedy, this is like... Texas is like one of the only places you could do this. Yeah. Like there's Canadians in Canada having to sneak into the U.S. to come to Texas to do comedy because... There's probably other people in Canada too. The what now? Oh, other <laughs> people like, sneaking there's in? there's Canadians in Canada. But, but, the com- but the comedians, right. like, you know, I mean, a lot of these California comedians, they're having to come to Texas. Um, you know, super cool art form. It, it's, there's nothing like it. You know, the connection you're able to get, you know, laughter. And, yeah. And all that, the unity and all that. And, um, you know, Texas don't give a damn. Everyone was ready for a, a meet and greet, a photo. Shit was crowded. People talking shit in my comments. Like, that, not one mask. That's what I was about to say. Not one solitary single mask. Uh, I didn't know if you'd seen. I saw some of those. They were like, not one mask. Shame on y'all. Or some Shingo, like you that. should be held liable. Shut the fuck up. Liable for laughs and fun, right? Freedom of speech tour dates. Here we go. We are hitting Corpus Christi, Texas. That's the next stop. That's May 20th through May 22nd. And then we hit the West Coast. Ontario, California, July 14th. Oxnard, California, July 15th. Irvine, California, August 11th. And then Denver, Colorado, August 27th through the 29th. We have Houston in September. Addison, Texas in October. San Antonio in October. And uh, we're getting the train back going, man. And I shot a short film mm. uh, a couple months back, and I just watched it last night. And I must say, everybody involved killed it, man. The the editing, the coloring, the the actors. It's a powerful message. I want to show it to you, man. Uh, it's called the Cause of Death. Hell yeah! I play. I basically play like La Muerte, cuz. Like when, when I show up, and if I touch you like this, like if we handshake, boom, that's it. That's it. You coming with me? You did. Oh shit! So powerful character. Um, of course, I try to give put my own little spin on it, put my own sauce on it. So he's like a cool ass deaf. So this is a short film. Yeah, it's a short film. It's gonna go in in um, some film festivals first, and um, I, I want to talk to the director. Like, bro, please put this on YouTube. Let people see this. Yeah, for real. Um, I know all the RPT fans are, are gonna enjoy it. So uh, I'm, gonna, I'm I'm gonna holler at him. See yeah. if I can get a, a private link, or if he's gonna allow me to share it with mm, folks or what the deal is ass. how i mean how long is it what's the runtime on something like that a project like that uh the the, the how film long is itself? the movie itself oh uh, man I, I don't remember it was about probably about 10 minutes okay but it's powerful dope very powerful uh we'll probably get into that i know this is rp team we'll talk a lot about what's going on in the media but <clears throat> and we'll talk about this on chingo chats as well but just uh the creative stuff you know the films the podcast the music like where are the directions everything going is going mm-hmm. i sent you that clip of uh, tom to girl with rogan and they talked about that pretty at length uh about the paywalls and you know where you know people are just gonna basically the way we always say you're gonna vote with your dollar mm-hmm. people that stop buying coke people that stop flying certain airlines people that start watching or stop watching certain things or voting with their dollar sports you're gonna go get peacock or you're gonna sign up for rpt you know you're gonna sign up for nbc you're gonna sign up for rpt nice that kind of thing and short films are no different like people are gonna start making productions of their own like tim dylan's always talking about oh, i want to make a full feature you know film i want to do this but i want it to be funded by the fans like you guys are the ones that are keeping these trains rolling mm-hmm. why go find investors or why go find and then they start like changing exactly your, your, like, all these suits yeah. are like well this is funny and that's funny and like no it's not you don't know anything about what's funny yeah i do and the fans do that kind of thing mm-hmm. but anyhow 
Absolutely. So I'm I'm really looking forward to that, man. Um, it just feels good to that. That's my sense of normalcy. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we're creating. We're, yeah. we're dude. Being out there in Killeen and Lubbock, people coming up to me like, "Hey, man, catch you on Monday." And I'm like, "Monday?" <laughs> I'm like, "What's Monday? Where I'm 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 gonna be home Monday." It's like we're tuning in every Monday. Dope. And this and that. And uh, hey, man, I'm I'm, I'm part of the Tia. The Tamale Intelligence Agency. What's up, man? I'm a patron. What's up, man? Red Pill Tamales. Um, so it's really cool to be like, damn, okay, I ain't know Lubbock was down with the RPT. I ain't up. know Colleen was rolling deep with the RPT. I love it. Yeah, I see we started using the uh, hashtag TIA and the hashtag Tamale Intelligence Agency mm. along with the Chingo warned y'all. Because we hadn't been using that. I just noticed. Yeah, so. yeah we need to add That's that. a good one. Identify yourself as TIA whenever Identify you uh, post yourself. something. Second Lieutenant, TIA, Lubbock Region, Puro Tia. But yeah, if you've never made that trip, that is a long trip. That's a long ass trip. Yeah. So and you know, but but cheers you, to you. Yeah. So we we stopped at some quaint little gas stations and just random. I ate way too many chicken tenders and fries over these. That's really what. That's really where I fell off. Yeah. That's really what pissed me off is you just get yourself in these situations where like okay after the club I'm kind of hungry. You stopping at some little drive through. Or you're on this long road trip. Okay, no, there's not a Whole Foods. They ain't got nothing. There's it's a Canes, good. though. Yeah, go ahead and get some more French fries. So I'm going to get back on it. So don't worry about it, y'all. Yeah. We're going to bounce back. Had my models in town. Simon. But uh, a lot happening, man. A lot. Where do you even start? You can go anywhere on that list and uh, and we can go go off of it. Because I know people have been hearing news about what happened yesterday in Minneapolis mm-hmm. and what's going on with the BLM, you know, mm-hmm. co-founder. DeSantis, the whole gamut. So before we even get to anything on there, what what did you write at the bottom, or what have you? What's on the top of your head that like was really? <clears throat> oh, a lot of stuff. Yeah, okay. A lot of stuff. Let's run off whatever's on the top of your head. Okay, so Johnson and Johnson. Okay, you have that on your list. Um, yeah, we jotted down. Jimmy Kimmel is doing a little psyop because uh, he the mainstream media is being the PR for uh, Hunter Biden. Yeah, you know he's doing his. That you machine know, is behind him, big time, and and a lot of people don't see it. They're just thinking like, oh, he's a he's America's crackhead. <laughs> you know, everyone's got one. He, there's one in every family. You know, it's a it's a story about redemption. And the, what is his book? Beautiful things or some shit. Is that what it, I never saw what it was Something called? Stupid, like bro, come on. Oh, I don't know if it's my laptop. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. Are the pictures real, motherfucker? You know, the funny you say redemption. What happens to people that get kicked off Twitter? To the Alex Joneses? To the uh, to the what's his name? Yiannopoulos? What's his name? Uh, I forgot his name. Mm-hmm. Milo. Milo. Mm-hmm. Where is the, their road to redemption? Where is Chingo Bling's road to redemption online? Or uh, Scott Adams, you know? Mm-hmm. There is none. And all of a sudden they're saying this guy's got, he's on a road to redemption for whatever smoking Parmesan cheese off of a rug? Man, Jimmy Kimmel, man. God, God damn, damn, bro. Just, just, just tell everybody you, I mean, just Kimmel. <laughs> God damn, how left can you be? You can't even be left center. You can't even be, like, objective. You, I mean... You go on Jimmy Kimmel's Twitter feed and like he won't post or I don't know who runs his shit, but they're not posting additional clips like, oh, here's a little fun clip when I had Hunter Biden on. It's almost like, man, I had to do that shit. And yeah. I was just hoping because you got to know, bro, you got to know people are going to jump on your ass. Yeah. It, it, unless you, um, what's the word, uh, you know, keep it real and, and ask difficult questions and, and don't just try to be like, so, so Hunter, congrats. How's the White House? Dee, 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 dee. And it's like Ukraine, right? A lot of money. War's about to pop off. You know, Russia and Ukraine about to go at it and America might have to jump in. But anyway, uh, what's good with crack? Oh, man, you know. Yeah, he was trying to make jokes, right? And none of it was hitting. None of it, but he he would say it in that community. That's a very nice pin you got there. I don't know. It was on the ground. I don't know who shit. This That's is a dope ass pin. This, this like the uh, it's the like QAnon. Yeah, this yeah. is QAnon pin right here. Fuck. Russia, a, Ukraine. Read uh-huh. a real manifesto with that. What? Oh no! <laughs> Do not say manifesto. Um. Yeah, he was trying to have that same like punchy kind of like zing zing zang. You know, Kimmel. Kimmel, and it was just like, what are we watching on national television right now? Just I mean, making light of the jokes of the of rather of the drugs and and, and what bro, bro, the, the addiction I mean, people were like it's not very uh it's not very I don't like, know, entertaining to make fun of a addicts where they're like hey so like uh, the story on the laptop came out 
and everyone said it was Russian disinformation. And then the New York Post wrote a story about it. And then Twitter and big tech uh, suppressed it. And no one was allowed to see it leading up to the election. And it probably could have shifted some things. But anyway, how you been? Oh, man, you know, out here just, just getting smoking it, you know? crack and shit, flying around, getting the bag. Getting the bag from the book tour. Man, getting the bag. I'm not mad at Hunter, bro. Hunter, he be hunting that money. He, he is, you know, and if we're, if we're talking about it as pure capitalist, which we are here in this uh, studio, good for him. Hunter, good for him. Hunter getting that bag. He smoked his way to the top. Literally and figuratively, because he's smoking everybody else that's writing books, real books, with real information out there, Bro, leaving them in the dust. They said that, um, if I'm not mistaken, y'all can fact check me. I heard that uh, China gave Hunter like a billy, like mm. a billion, like, or, or he's owed a billion, or it's in payments. But basically, that budget was to come to the U.S. and like buy out little tech companies and stuff, and just relocate them, relocate them to China. Like the tech Af- companies. Yeah, like some kind of I don't know specifically microchips. I don't know what, but um, <clears throat> it was his job to basically absorb and acquire this these uh these companies and relocate them basically to China so that you could still the R&D, the research and yeah. development better. You could steal the jobs a little bit better. Or you could just shut them down and shelve them. Because these days, when it comes to microchips and tech and all that, it plays into the military portion of the U.S. versus China. Mm. So, for example, if you have certain ballistic uh, high-end weaponry, mm-hmm. you probably need some, some dope-ass microchips if you want them to do what they're supposed to do you know, strike precisely and and this, that, and the third. So they say that's why they're really fighting over Taiwan. They say because Taiwan, um, you know, China's looking at Taiwan like, bitch, there's some big company out there. They're like the shit and making microchips. Like nobody else can really do it the way they do it. And that's really what they need it for is for their military. So, it, it, you know, tying it back into Kimmel. As it was, man, mainstream mainstream late night tv was already lame it was already whack it was already super lefty uh everything was anti-trump anti-trump and now they now they you know sucking on biden you know what i'm saying they just like giving him a little back rub rubbing his feet after this dude has has pretty much gone around to different countries collected money they're probably compromised you know what i'm saying so why are we sitting here laughing and joking late night TV uh, 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 over a situation that's potentially pretty dangerous? Yeah, extremely dangerous, right? And it, we'll get back to the serious, serious stuff, which we're yeah. talking about here on RPT. But I can't help but think every time I hear Hunter Biden speak, especially that Kimmel interview or whatever you want to call it, how he sounds like a much more effeminate version of his dad, a young yeah. version. Of, like when his dad was young, he was like... He sounded like, let's just be real, like a real hard ass racist kind of guy, yeah. which we all have. I'm clips. from Delaware. We've seen it, right? We had slaves. Yeah, we've seen <laughs> it. And meanwhile, Hunter sounds like this real feminine, you know, drug addict of a of a half ass son. And and you know what, man? Like, drug addiction aside, let's say if he was a patriot, but he had a little meth problem. Mm-hmm. You know, it'd be like, hey, man, Hunter, go ahead, get your teeth fixed, player. Like, you know, them some. I like them veneers, player. Like, if he was, I'd forgive him. I mean, I'm not judging him on the drug shit. You know what I mean? Addiction is a weird thing. It's very complex. I don't want to pick on him for being an addict. What I don't like is him being a traitor. Yeah. And having big tech and the mainstream fucking media covering for him every step of the way. Because the way a lot of people look at it is they couldn't keep the laptop issue under reps yeah so the fact that they couldn't contain it and it's out and people just posting the different pictures of of him you know posing all weird with different chicks and doing weird shit like even if you okay you into prostitutes okay all right that's your thing let's just say you a party animal that's cool but if you're this international bag boy you going doing deals you flying on air force two going with your pop to you know, you you med- you meddling, you doing corrupt type of shit, you know, you fucking with Ukraine's uh, these oligarchs, these oligarchs, they're in your pocket now, you know, you owe people money and you a crackhead and and you got the the laptop and they got all this compromising shit on you. There's no telling what other stuff they got on him and his dad. So 
that kind of sucks that we're all at the mercy of whatever deals they fucking worked. But the raza, you know, the, 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 la- the, um, you know, the, what's the word? How are we going to describe Latinx? The, yeah. Just the normie, the normie people that think I'm a sellout and they think Trump is Hitler and shit like that. They're probably like, what's the big deal? So what? He went to Ukraine. I don't. Uh, they, it's like it's like they want to be blind on purpose. Like sure. Y luego, güey, fue pa'l Ukraine, güey. Ya está con madre las fiestas, güey. Los pinches taquitos del Ukraine, güey. Yo también quería ir con Hunter. Like they probably they probably just shoo shoo it under the rug because Jimmy Kimmel normalized this shit. Y'all motherfuckers are normalizing this traitor ass. This some traitor Joe ass shit. Yahweh. You know what I'm saying? You be- you Beijing Biden right now. And this video might get taken down because all the shit I'm saying. You're in line. But in the meantime, go like it and subscribe on YouTube. Yeah. And, uh, tell a friend. Tell a friend. You know, I've never heard the word used yet. I just thought about it right now. What word? Tr- uh, treasonous. Yeah, There's very... been, it has not been thrown around at all. And I, I wonder why. And I wonder if what people read or see, if they ever in their minds put the two to two together of like me going here, taking this from that, giving it to the big guy, all these things. Are any of these acts of treason? All the, all the emails. Are and... any of these acts of treason? <clears throat> I don't know. I like to think some of them are because of the way that the facts kind of just lay out there. Even if you have to piece them together yourself, I think you can piece them as treasonous. Yeah. I mean, I, I didn't go through the entire laptop, but. I mean, he's fin- they really good at finessing people. Yeah. They're like, we're going to go on late night TV, and you're just going to be like, I don't know. Is it my laptop? Maybe it is. Maybe it ain't. Maybe it is. I don't know. Rudy Giuliani? I don't know what... How ballsy to have that be your response. Yeah. It's like, how many laptops you have? Yeah. You, you is can't it keep your... track? I don't, I don't know. Shit, I, don't... I got a gang of laptops, player. <laughs> it's like, okay. Are, are you compromised by other governments? And now, speaking of Ukraine, now Ukraine and Russia got smoke. They got their little beef. Russia is trying to punk the shit out of Ukraine, and I don't know a whole lot about it because this is like breaking news type shit. Yeah. But there it goes again. There goes Ukraine. So it's almost like, okay, Joe, are you about to send us to war because we got to back up Russia? Are we, are we backing up Ukraine? You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to go up against Russia now because Ukraine is your homeboy. And I mean, that I'm sure there's a lot of um, foreign policy and, and just different layers of... Uh, geopolitical sure stuff and to two mexicans that really don't know shit about geopolitical uh information or what you know situations it seems like he would have to back up some of his friends right like who gave more of a bag to the administration or to the family and what was the tweet i think that the news was saying that like if um if russia isn't friendly to ukraine the united states would interfere it's like why why would we do that right now well because you know china's going to jump in or they're going to do i mean it's about to be a whole bunch of countries just pop, 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 wait, das, das, das. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be one of the Mexican standoffs. Das, das, das. Hold on, hold on, bitch. And meanwhile, within the United <laughs> States, everyone's doing that in certain cities around the country right now to okay. each other. What we got, man? What, what is that? Looting and shit? Or what are you talking about? Yeah, let's go ahead. We got the So another shooting in Minneapolis, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce the gentleman's name. Dante Wright. There you go, Dante Wright. Uh, he was sh- he was shot during a traffic stop because uh, he was he had warrants out for his arrest. Okay. Uh, and this happened last last night yesterday morning. We didn't know a whole lot about it. We still really don't. But the cop was identified this morning as a, she's like a 26 year old veteran of the force, police force, and she was a white lady mm. uh, who said she mistakenly reached. She thought she was reaching for a taser, pulled out her weapon, shot him, uh, shot once, and he drove off and crashed. And and uh, that was that, right? Mm. But uh, there's still more information coming out. Um, there was audio from a scanner that said, or may have alluded to, if it was the same situation, because it's still, you can't corroborate it. It's still too new, right? He might have a weapon. He has a weapon. This, that, and the other was said on the scanner audio, which we'd have to wait and see and find out. Uh, but he also had some other previous convictions of, it was like a small weed thing, which no big deal, right? But then there was aggravated uh, robbery mm. that also just happened two months ago. So... It's not the picture of a person that some people I, I saw were posting. It's it's been everywhere, right? So people were like uh, saying this is he was a future med student or something or the I other. I it. And I was like, damn. Um, so we don't know yet, but it's just it's happening. And immediately, even after the mom said, who by the way, very white. So the, she was like uh, something about air fresheners. He had air fresheners oh, and they so shot he, him. So he's mixed. Yeah, he's mixed. He's mixed as fuck. Uh, okay. He's like a like a Kaepernick or a okay. Holmes guy, but. 
um, yeah, they 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 started immediately looting after the mother said no violence because if you make if you if there's violence everywhere it's gonna be about that not about my son. Mm-hmm. I think we can understand that. And immediately they went to Foot Locker. And they were like, shut up, white woman. Yeah, exactly. We don't listen to you. We're against you, bitch. I'm going to Target, ho. Target, Foot Locker, Walmart, <laughs> um, whatever they could get their hands on. But like, ain't that chingo bling with a washing machine? <laughs> hey, 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 man, mind your business. Um, there was another police related incident. I think Snoop Dogg had posted. So here's what happened. Yeah. So it was in Virginia. It was a uh, a uh, army. I think he's like army lieutenant. lieutenant yeah. Okay. So he was in his his fatigues and shit, his uniform, and it looked like he was like in a, a big suburban or something. So apparently, he didn't have his uh, the rear plates like yeah the temporary tags. Yeah. The, the the plates weren't up to par on the rear of the vehicle. The cops followed him for a mile and a half with the lights on. Almost like, okay, what's up with this dude? Why is he not just pulling over? Mm. So they didn't know that homeboy was like, oh, I want to go to a more well-lit area or some shit. What you're supposed to do. Yeah. If you don't and, feel and, safe. But a mile and a half with the lights on, I mean, I guess technically, you, I mean, what do you... Average person doesn't have all this info like, oh, you could have called 911 and told them, hey, I'm being pulled over, but can you let them know? You know what I mean? I'm going right. to call the police station, let them know. So... The version that, that I guess uh, Snoop Dogg posted lacks a shit ton of context, and you basically see uh, from the, uh, the uh, the driver, the army lieutenant guy, mm-hmm. you see it from his point of view. So he already set up his cell phone in the car, and he's just like, what's going on? What's going on? Like, kind of has his windows, I mean, his hands out the window, and you just hear the cop screaming like, get out of the car, like... Get out of the car. Mm. Get out of the car. And he's like at a gas station. Well, why? What's happening? Like, not really complying, kind of resisting. Mm-hmm. So you just see, you know, the version that I guess went viral. Mm-hmm. The version that lacks a bunch of context. You don't see a whole bunch of shit before. You don't see a whole bunch of shit after. Mm. All you see is this man in army fatigues getting pepper sprayed by white looking cops. Yeah. So uh, apparently he's Afro Latino, you know, black Latino. The, uh, the lieutenant. So now, there's a dude on YouTube named Officer Tatum. Mm-hmm. Uh, black dude, conservative, ex-police. He puts up a whole shit ton of videos and hot takes on everything. Everything in the news, sorry. <laughs> and um, so Officer Tatum's breakdown is more from like a police police point of view okay where he's he's breaking down their tactical, like the commands. He's like, this. we are now at 15 commands. You know, he's t- saying like, okay, first of all, the cops shouldn't be shouting over each other. He's like, that they need to be retrained on that. Um, he's like, now if you, because he was showing the body cam footage, mm-hmm. so the cops point of view, right? And then same time stamp with the uh, the the uh, army lieutenant setting up his camera, like trying to be smug, like, whoa, I don't understand what's going on. And mm. it's like, motherfucker, get out the car, bitch. Right. We're trying to talk to you tell you we've been we've been had the lights on for damn near two miles mm. we don't know what you don't got no license plate back here we don't know what's going on we mm. don't know shit so they're scared and before he before he did his analysis he he played he set it up by playing a clip of a regular traffic stop a whole nother situation where the cop is approaching the person the gentleman gets out next thing you know the gentleman uh is like pow, 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 like shoots the cop kills him mm-hmm. and then burns off and you see it off on the dash cam he's like okay i use that to just pre preface or whatever the mm-hmm, word is mm-hmm. to contextualize the the strategy that cops use when they're approaching you know these situations all right so you're seeing it side by side the cops are like, why is this dude not pulling over? Mm-hmm. Why is he not listening to commands? Why is he not doing anything? You got tinted windows. We don't know what the fuck's going on. And the dude's just like, well, I don't understand what's going on. And basically, he could have got shot because it, it 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 escalated to such a heated misunderstanding. For sure. And you got there's so many variables. You got to blame the mainstream media as well for probably creating this um, hysteria, this false this false uh, uh um what's the word narrative yeah this false narrative that man it's it's hunting see it's open season man these cops it, cops are the number one biggest threat to the black community uh but if you look at statistically it's like nah bro we need to fix education we need to fix you know communities we need to there's a whole laundry list of stuff we can work on before you even 
get to the okay how bad are cops yeah. to, to our health but uh, once you see an ex police officer kind of break it down like see here he should have complied here he's 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 um uh, what did he say he's interfering with like not resisting but it's like you're being detained mm -hmm. when when you're in a traffic stop you're technically being detained right but um his analysis was great i recommend it officer tatum and um he's he's doing his analysis of the uh the army guy who's getting so now the army guy is going to sue now he's going to probably get paid off by the uh the, the city or whatever and it could have went it could have been a lot worse but you see the body cam running after so now they they're, they're helping wipe his eyes now there's mm -hmm. more people there they're talking to him they're like hey bro why did you not pull over why did you not this you know why are you this could have been he said you would have been on your way he said i would have seen your uniform or whatever he says i'm ex-military this ain't even no big deal right. he's like you would have been on your way but the way you're behaving the way you're not cooperating you're not complying you're making us nervous right and motherfucker got pepper sprayed so now he's probably gonna get paid he's gonna sue and uh fortunately it didn't it didn't end up any worse than that damn See, I saw a piece, also a video that was only, it was kind of spliced together, but it might have been the same one Snoop had shared because it was kind of, you know, cut together and I didn't know most of that information that you just shared. And that's a problem with a lot of this shit, right? Video lies. It, it lies, yes, exactly. Video can lie because you can make it say whatever you want. And we learned that with Trump for years. You learned that, you're learning that with George Floyd. You are, you're learning that with George Floyd. Yep, 100%. That's which uh, the trial is still going on. And it, it's almost as if what's going on now with this gentleman uh, in Minneapolis is like the pregame to what's going to happen <laughs> during the you know Chauvin trial, which somebody made a funny point. They were like, uh, you know, maybe this will help the jurors uh, go ahead and just not have to fake uh, the whatever their responses might be or how they maybe look at the information that's being presented to them. Because if the city was burning before the trial ended, they're like, you know what? The city's already burning. It can't be because of our uh, choice to how to convict this gentleman. So they're like, fuck it, we're going to go by the facts, what we saw, and not necessarily fear for their lives or what's going to happen. Do some small talk while my prostate is, uh, <laughs> needs to get... Uh, oh, man, this is the best time yeah, to bring up... Coffee, That's fine. Coffee. If you're, Are you going inside? No. Okay. Running, running. So the, this is the perfect time to bring up how often Chingle Blink, at least once a podcast, and how often you guys catch it, notice it, and make a meme about it, talk about it, send messages either to me, to him, to the What You Said page, and uh, it never fails. And you have asked, and I think we talked about on the uh, RPT uh, Patreon episode, which if you're not part of the TIA, you wouldn't know. Somebody asked if Chingo's gotten his prostate checked. Uh, we went on a very interesting uh, rant about that, a little bit of a bit. And he said he hasn't, but he might need to. He has had one cup of coffee here. He claims he's had more. You're going to start shouting out patrons of every time I do a I did. I absolutely have to shout him out because names. I'm gonna. And Gabe is number one because he's, I think, a self-proclaimed meme god at this point. Um, and a couple of other people too that just, they just make funny shit. And it's all around, revolving around how often you have to get up, sir. We, we're oh, we're yeah. concerned for you at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of it is mental. A lot of it is mental. Like anytime, like, uh, like on that road trip, like if I see a gas station, it's like my mind starts saying, yeah, you got to pee right now. Damn. And, then, and then you start getting closer. Then you park. And then you're like... Now I, I got to shit. No, and it's like, I really didn't have to pee that bad 20 <laughs> minutes ago. But now that I... It's like your little bladder knows, like, I am 20 feet away from this restroom. And if it's occupied or locked, Oof. I, need a, I need a big old Gatorade cup or something in the car. <laughs> and then, you know, my wife gets annoyed. And uh, it becomes a big thing. You turn into former Vice President Joe Biden. You start shitting yourself, pissing yourself. Damn. No, I don't need diapers yet, <laughs> brother. But um, but where we left <clears throat> off, you were saying like, it's just another classic example that you can't jump the gun on stuff. And yeah. uh, I think that dude, Officer Tatum, was like kind of calling out Snoop Dogg, like, bro, you know, you're just pushing a narrative. Mm -hmm. You 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 coming up with an opinion. It's like I get it, man. We're all biased. But if you're if you're already viewing the world through the filter of all cops are bad and they love harassing black people and then you see a, a piece of this video right the 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 driver's uh his version because he's taking his time setting up his phone they're like right. get out of the car yeah like, put your hands out the thing and and undo your seatbelt uh, and you know and of course you know of course he had a gun the uh the driver but um but it's anyway. funny well it's funny you bring up snoop and it, it wasn't on the flow for today but uh did you see the video that was going around a couple days ago of him talking about the flu shot 
Oh no! What happened? Oof! I gotta try to. Uh, I try to find it. Uh, what, he was like, it basically, you know, he's in front of a camera. I don't know if he does a show. I'm, I don't really follow Snoop at all. Not that big of a fan anymore. But uh, he was like, I ain't taking no motherfucking flu shot. And you, I ain't letting you inject me with this. Bullshit. You mean the the, the COVID? Just shot? no, no, just oh, a regular, the flu just shot. a regular flu shot. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you know how he's fought, he, how, what where he sides with this COVID uh, vacuna, right? Mm-hmm. So people were just roasting him, like, you know, let me find out. He's not gonna say a word about how dangerous it could be to take an experimental drug. But we've had. Oh, he he was. Big basically tiptoeing around the the main vaccine he didn't say well, this might have been an older video because it wasn't oh. shit about it it was just shitting on the the seasonal flu shot the flu shot oh, that we've okay. had for decades now right how he'd never you know you, you just need orange juice some vitamin d and whatever and some sleep you know my immune system this that and the other but it, it, that should be what everybody's tune should be about what's going on now and it wasn't so people are like why are you just ignoring this experimental drug which by the way might lead into the next uh, topic is the johnson and johnson yeah causing blood clots yeah, so so basically, um, was it the CDC or, or is it the CDC, right? They said they want to do a pause or is it the U.S.? Well, the, I just, the articles FDA. all say that, yeah, U.S. pauses Johnson okay, & Johnson. Okay, okay. Yeah, we don't know if it's FDA or CDC. But anyway, U.S. recommends pause for the Johnson & jo- Johnson vaccine over clot reports. So I was seeing a little bit of that on Twitter this morning. And supposedly the math on that is like, uh, like it's rare. Like you have a very, very small chance of this. These are the arguments I was seeing, right? Basically, a lot of people that are pro uh, vacuna, pro vaccine, <laughs> they were getting mad at this because they're like, y'all pausing it. Y'all making this big old news thing over a handful of blood clots. You're about to scare people that were already hesitant to begin with. Now y'all really going to cause a problem because a lot of people didn't want to sign up for this thing anyway. So now you're you're like uh, feeding their fears and further encouraging them to prolong this. So all the people that are like, you need to get your shot and get your papers. They were mad as shit at the CDC. They're like, bitch, shut the fuck up. It's only a couple blood clots. You say it's only a couple of blood clots, right? It's only a couple, maybe only a couple of people are dying from these adverse effects. But it's also, let's, since we're talking about guns, we're going to talk about it a little bit more in a second. Uh, it's almost like the people that say, well, if you save one life, you know, it's worth banning guns, doing, restricting oh, wow. guns, taking them away. Mm. No, Hell it's no. not. Who said that? That's the, that's, that's a, that's an immediate argument for people who are against guns. If you could just save one life, it's worth, no, it's not. And neither is this. It's just not a good comparison. It's not a good argument. Mm um so yeah i think a lot of people are gonna be like they're gonna see what's the word it's gonna confirm Mm -hmm. and reaffirm what they were already thinking so anybody that was already doubtful about it they're gonna be like aha see look at that the own cdc look at that they can't even get their story straight one minute they're telling you to go sign up the next minute they tell you it's a pause so yeah i totally agree it's gonna scare the shit out of people let's see if this plays Fuck that, I'm not getting no flu shots because it's flu season. Nigga, I'm gonna take some motherfucking lemons, some honey, some oranges. Nigga, grandma got the remedy, nigga. Go holler at your grandma, nigga. Or holler at somebody old in your family, nigga. You don't need that shot, nigga. They shooting some shit in your ass. I'm cool. I don't want none of that. I'm straight. I think they shooting some, some control in you. Some shit to take control of you. This is from 2012. You know? Yeah, so. Yeah, your mind, body, and soul. You look, look, slow you down a bit. Con- I don't trust him. Let's add some context. Snoop is high as fuck when he's saying this. Which nope. some people might think we are when we talk on this show. Go Sometimes ahead. I am. First of all, for some context, this is his uh his like green screen show. Yeah. Where which is which, you know, shout out to Snoop for being an OG, uh, a legend, and and always being up on like technology like media type shit mm-hmm. uh, along along with like be real be real has, oh yeah he's been having be real tv uh when motherfuckers were trying to get their youtube off the ground he already had his own little network but anyway snoop is sitting here he's talking provocatively he's mm-hmm. being entertaining he's riffing he's wearing a koala uh hat is that a koala looks like it a little koala beanie uh he's high as shit uh he's doing his green screen show he has a pimp cup sneakers a coat 45 on the desk uh, some swish of sweets. You know what I mean? Just a bunch of hood shit yeah. laid out on the table. And he's riffing. He's being entertaining. He's also spitting facts, though. We've been talking about this shit for decades as well. We're talking about it now with people that really, really think that you're being microchipped by taking any kind of vacuna. So, yeah. So, in, in other words, are, are you saying, like, 
Is there a double standard? Why haven't they kicked Snoop off the uh, internet? Hey, I'm not for censorship whatsoever. All I'm saying is, why is this the tune for a, a, a vaccine shot, whatever, that we've had forever, that we take, most people take, a lot of people take on a regular yearly basis. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, now... You have an experimental one that was rushed, that was this, that was that, that we're having a lot of people have adverse effects and people are trying to uh, brush, you know, push under the rug. They're saying, take it, take it quickly. Everybody take it. Why can't you say, take some lemon, some honey, your mama's, your grandma's uh, fucking yeah. remedies and sleep? Well, yeah, you can't say that. That's why he's not saying it. Exactly. <laughs> and that's the point. And plus it's 20, you know, that video was uploaded in 2012. There's yeah. no telling when he said that. He might have said it 2010. Right. Maybe he heard of somebody. Again, Snoop is not a virologist. No, neither are we. Snoop is not an epidemiologist. No. Um, he probably heard some shit like, man, uh, such and such Annie died after she had got the, um, the flu, the flu shot. And somehow we're correlating those two things together, and we believe it was due to that, yeah. and maybe that influenced him. And he, again, I think he's just talking shit, being funny. Uh, my my problem more isn't isn't stuff like that. It's kind of like when you jump the gun and start to push a narrative about, aha, it was a white cop killing a black man, and it's like. No, it was uh, Officer Gutierrez. He got fired yeah. for pepper spraying another Latino who happens to be black, Af Afro-Latino. But uh, that's, you know, the media, man. It's social media. But, um, man, I, we saw an episode of uh, the QAnon thing on uh, oh, Into H the Storm? HBO Max. I think that was episode three we watched. Have yeah. you seen it? Dude, no, I have to watch it now, though. You got me so it interested is, in it. It is so bizarre yeah this whole thing is so fucking weird bro like how many episodes is it i don't know i haven't seen how many episodes okay. the, the whole thing is but the people that created 8chan the people that own 8chan mm -hmm. you got this one dude and his son and then you got the other little guy that's in the in the chair and um first of all the guy who makes this whole series you could tell he's pretty left i think okay because just the way he frames stuff, like, oh, this is, uh, you know, Jack Posobiec, who is known for, from Pizzagate fame, and almost like trying to discredit everybody, like, oh, General Flynn, uh, who, you know, coincidentally was hanging with Roger Stone, and Roger Stone, they say he might have been part of the Q thing, and, and what's the connection between this and that? But besides all that, like, conspiracy mumbo jumbo, just from... Like these these people that created HN, their characters is so bizarre, bro. Because you know they're all about free speech, so they live in the Philippines, and I guess it's I don't know, I guess the servers are in the U.S. or something. It's mm. I don't know where the shit's hosted. I don't know too much about that. You mean the character of the people? Uh, no. Uh, what I'm trying to say is the servers for HN, mm -hmm. if they're in the Philippines or if they had to be in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're saying there were interesting characters. Oh, I, the people, The yeah. people are, okay. Yeah, the people who created the website. It's the man and his son and then the little guy in the wheelchair. That's it? Basically, the little guy in the wheelchair, like, built it. Yeah. And he didn't really have the funds to kind of keep it going because nobody wants to advertise on this crazy free speech website mm. where crazy, crazy little mass shooters post their manifestos and they be egging them on like the the guy that shot up in a mosque in new zealand mm -hmm. i think it was called christ church new zealand um he apparently was on 8chan basically saying yup i'm gonna do it today i'm ready i'm gonna live stream it here's a link and then all the little other users like anons they call them an anons all oh, right they're all on there hyping them up like bitch you ain't about that life damn i bet you won't stream it and they're all sharing the link and egging them on like hell yeah what's the uh what's the highest score what's the highest score like who had the biggest mass shooting and um and then they're like holy shit this is real when they're watching the stream of him driving and then getting out and pulling out them big ass guns in new zealand i'm like where the fuck he get them big ass in guns? new zealand in new zealand some big shit and he just went up in there ba ba in a mosque pobrecitos um and all the people on the 8chan are like oh my god this dude's for real holy shit holy shit it's happening it's happening because it's all anonymous it's all free speech it's the wild wild west they don't regulate shit so they left the manifesto up and i guess once it gets a x amount of um maximum shares or traction mm -hmm. i think then and only then it got pulled down or something 
but I've never been on them websites, but apparently they got all kinds of weird, extreme, on the fringe, all kind of, uh, what's the word, um, fetish, everything. They said they got diaper porn, like grown people wearing diapers on there. Man, the it, it, was, it was strange because the guy that was um, doing the documentary, he had the camera rolling all the time. So when I guess the people thought they were off the record... They'd be like, hey, uh, we should go to this um, this place. And, and apparently they had porn playing all the time. Like in the, on the car, he had it in, in the car, on the dashboard. And, God damn. And so they were really painting a picture of like, like these dudes are kind of like weird. And the dad, who, um, who I guess is the owner of HM, apparently he had a whole bunch of porn sites back in the day before he started HM. So, um, you know, they, they're just wilding out out there in the Philippines. This ain't helping nobody's cause, obviously, this mm-hmm. documentary. So I, I see why you might think they're super far left. Like, nothing like, you know, shifting gears and then rubbing one out if you're going to play porn on your dash while you're driving, you know? No, I don't know. He motherfucker just had, they just in a parking lot and they're not even watching. It's just playing. <laughs> and, uh, but, um, but anyway, it's called Q Into the Storm. And there's a lot of beef within their organization. Yeah. Um, it's very interesting how. This whole Q phenomenon, yeah, it just blows my mind. I never knew all this stuff about how like it could be a psyop, like it could be like a psychological operation. Just like, hey, let's create this fake little cult and let's use this um, vague language and make it repetitive and like create this Q persona to kind of fuck with people's head. Mm-hmm. And the documentary director, he has all these different hypotheses, like. Well, there's these people in Italy who, I guess they had did a couple hoaxes and they made everybody believe there was a sat- like a satanic cult in Italy. And they basically, um, it was a ruse. So they framed it. They just took fake pictures and, and spray painted some stuff, put some little fake blood over here and just disseminated the information to where it caught. So it's almost like this social experiment and all this Q stuff. They show a lot of the QAnon followers and some of these folks, man, it's, it's strange because you're mixing the Trump fandom with a little bit of politics, with a little bit of conspiracy, with it's just all these variables and ingredients to make this menudo pot of, of like a phenomenon. Speaking of Italy, though, what happened to Italy did it? Man, I guess they couldn't really prove that shit. Fuck. I mean, you still got whatever happened to a uh, Lynn Wood. Yeah. I know Sidney Powell is being sued by um Smartmatic. Uh, I think Smartmatic is going to sue uh, Mike Lindell, the pillow guy. Who still says that Trump will win in August or something. <laughs> yeah, he keeps putting out documentaries. And according to him, uh, I haven't watched his documentaries because they get pulled down. But according to him, he has all the receipts. He has all the proof. He's like... I can prove China was involved in November 3rd. And I can prove that this man really didn't get the most votes in American history. And Why we got to wait till summer? Fuck, man. <laughs> Tell us now. Weird, man. Strange times. Um, the whole Q phenomenon is crazy because it made it hard for people to come out as Trump supporters. Yes. Right? Yes. Because they instantly want to label you. As, oh, you must have been on 8chan. You must be very familiar with Q. And you wanted them Q people. And it's like, no, I'm looking at these policies. I'm looking at these candidates. I'm looking at these hoaxes and this propaganda. And I think, you know, it's possible to want to vote Republican or vote for Trump because of China policy, uh, border policy, law and order, economy, jobs. There's like a whole bunch of reasons. You know, maybe you want to be a populist, nationalist. Uh, maybe you about America first. There's all kind of reasons why maybe you could have went that way. It doesn't necessarily mean you're on 8chan and you believe QAnon and there's a motherfucker named Q with Q level access and he's dropping, he's doing these drops where he uploads to these message boards mm-hmm. like random shit. Where we go one, we go all. Uh, why, what makes a movie great? Great actors. <laughs> could mean nothing, could mean something. And it's like it, psychological shit. When you, when you think about why people vote for people, right? And it's funny, I just thought about this as you said that. It, whether you vote Republican or Democrat or whatever, mm-hmm. if you were to just boil it down to the, just, to the lowest common denominator, wouldn't you say that people vote for the candidate that they would feel most safe with? 
in the country. Mm-hmm. Like they would feel most safe living their day to day life, raising their family, doing doing what they do. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny to think that that many more people felt safer in this country mm-hmm. with Joe Breezy at the helm of the ship than with Trump. Somehow they felt like it's just a safer America. Well, well yeah, bro, because if you're believing the hoaxes and you're believing mainstream media narrative and you're watching Trevor Noah and Jimmy Kimmel and you're consuming all this left agenda, you know, they're, they're, they were painting Trump as, as he's racist, he's a Hitler, he has concentration camps with little kids, he has babies in cages, um, this is authoritarian, this is fascism, uh, blah, 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 blah. Even though Biden it now wants to build a wall and now he's got he built all the cages and he's got a shit show at the border, but never mind that. Even with uh, even with all that said, if you were to like do now, I mean, obviously hindsight's twenty twenty for a lot of these uh, buy remorse voters. Mm-hmm. If you put it next to each other, what exactly could you compare that would that with Trump versus Biden that would say I felt so much more danger? Was it the border? Did you feel more safe or more? You uh, mean Biden voters? Yeah, like if they're looking at it now, do you feel safer or more in danger with the border situation? Do you feel more safe or in danger with Russia, Ukraine, and what's going on there with well, China? Yeah. Well, if they're watching CNN, they think China's just a, a, a trade ally that we've just have a little bit of friction with, but we're gonna fix it. Uh, you know, if 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 you're getting all your information from left-wing outlets and all they're doing is making uh, uh, the Trump family, they're corrupt, and look at Jared Kushner. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like They're just, oh, Steve Bannon, that's the devil. That's the devil. You know, who is this? And they're just believing all that stuff. They're only seeing one side. They don't understand why people are so anti-Biden. They don't see why China's a threat. They don't see that these people have been compromised. They don't know Swalwell is on this intelligence committee, but he done kicked it with spies, fang fang, and these people. They don't know we're literally at war already. It's not just a tariff war. It's an information thing. Uh, we're America's being destabilized. I know I sound crazy, <laughs> but look at how divided we are. Yeah. We've never been this fucking divided. We're like, if you would have told me, five ten years three years ago hey man y'all might be on the verge of civil war coming up pretty soon and shit's about to hit the fan i'd be like what no they're not coming for our guns yeah bitch i'm busy working and touring i ain't got shit yeah this is the best economy in the <laughs> yeah you're, you're telling me that the major league baseball and, and the ncaa and all these coca-cola all these people about to uh, even will smith he pulled a movie production out of out of Georgia because of these racist Jim Crow esque laws. Really? Yeah. Will Smith and and I forget who he was. I think it was director Antoine Fuqua. They were working on a film. Who knows? Maybe they just didn't have the budget. Maybe they're just trying to. There's just an excuse maybe, to get they, out of yeah, it. Yeah. There's you never really know the full fucking story. Like maybe Will didn't finish. He he didn't want to finish doing that shit because Jada was back home acting the fool and he wanted to get back to Jada. <laughs> she was in some more entanglements. She was over there with uh, August Alsina. But uh, um, but I say that to say this. I would it would behoove you if that's the word. I highly encourage motherfuckers. I don't give a damn how patriotic you are. I don't care how out of the loop. Just look into both sides of the arguments. Like, op- expand where you're getting your sources from. Like, be skeptical. Ask questions. I'm not telling you to be a conspiracy theorist, but don't just buy everything they're feeding you. Like, you must give up your guns for your safety. You must lock down forever for your safety. Just wait for your UBI. You know, socialism is good. And uh, yeah. Trump is bad. And China's a friend. And there's no problem at the border. You know, this has nothing to do with future voters. And, you know, this is the good Democrat, uh, the good political party. It's like, if you take all that shit with, with um, what's the word, uh, uh, at face value yeah if you just take all that like no hunter biden's good and he didn't do anything wrong and and it, i like that big tech hides stories from me you know if you want to be that kind of person <laughs> you 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 do not belong in the tia you cannot be in the tamale intelligence agency you need to sit at the kids table and remain a one issue voter and just believe the fucking news you were you're sharp this morning did you get I, a lot of sleep did you get a lot of sleep last I night mean, uh, shout you had some cbd shellshockcbd.com 10 percent off promo code chingo i highly recommend the delta eight gummies uh they put you on your ass at night uh if, if you're if you don't like that they got the cbd with the melatonin all kinds of stuff they have pets treats oils and did you get some good sleep 
You legitimately seem very rested after a Decent. long weekend. Decent. Well, I'm, I ain't gonna lie. I came in here a little groggy, mm. but um, but yeah, that that trip, it it really discombobulated. I yeah. mean, too many fries and chicken tenders. It's just every meal. What happened to the salmon and salad? That usually because oh, wrong club, different place. When you at the improv comedy right, club, right. but but I will say this: at twice as funny comedy club, I that. Those were the only healthy meals I had, oh. besides maybe IHOP. When I was at Twice as Funny Comedy Club, they had um, like salmon, rice, asparagus. They had all that good shit. Um, the other place in Lubbock, it was a more of a fries and sandwich type of vibe. Dope. But that is neither here nor there. Let's uh, let's go back. We were talking about this video, or I don't know if it was before the show. We we're talking about what happened in Minneapolis, and then the mm-hmm. gun thing. We'll get into, and then you mentioned the the lieutenant, which we talked about, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then I told you there was a one where uh, a lady shot a, shot a cop, and you hadn't seen it. It was from like four weeks ago, probably like a month ago. Oh shit! And I, I got the video. I was, it actually, it was hard to pull up. It just happened, so I don't know why it's so difficult to pull up. But let's see if it plays in its entirety, and it's not just chopped up. Uh, I fast forwarded a little bit because. Um, they they started off with what act, what happened happened, but let's see if this plays. A shootout in Tennessee. You can step right back here. What did you take out of it? Nothing. I was okay. Thinking. Okay. All right. Listen. Don't go back in your car. Just come back here. I think we're getting off on the wrong foot. Okay. Because I'm really confused on why I'm getting. He's stopped. got several warrants. Okay. I, that has nothing to do with me. You don't know who's in the car. Nobody's in our car. Well, now I know that. However, now I'm going to address the other problems. Okay, so you want so, my bag? You didn't see this one? No. So just step right back here. Can I use the restroom? And let you know it's being audio and video recorded. Just to let you know. Okay. So it's just in here? Yes, sir. Okay, was there... Well, I'm about five minutes from here. You know, she's on her phone. She's smoking mm-hmm. a cigarette, I think. This cop was more than nice. Yes. It's probably Part of my therapy. What did he find? A little bit of weed? I guess so. You, my lighter? Yeah, I'm not done with that though. Where's your lighter at? In the car. 13. It says you're about right seven time. minutes away. I'll, I'll, I'll get it for you, he okay. said. Uh, so you would drive oh, over right here at the Dollar General. Can you have you start from okay. 23? Dangerous. Super dangerous, man. Thank you. you. You can't have an attitude with cops. You can't be going back, reaching in your car. You're putting yourself in a very dangerous situation. I, AT&T, where you at when you need you? Yeah, you can't be talking back like a motherfucker. Do me a favor, turn around. No, hold turn on. Around. Don't put me in handcuffs. I haven't done anything wrong. Ma'am. No, don't put me You're in handcuffs. You're about to get paid. No. Oh, my God. Why is she running? Get out. Get out oh on, 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 on the ground. God. Get on the ground. Just listen. No. No. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So now she's getting tased. What happened? It did not work. It's a big ass girl. Mm. Step out. Ma'am, put the gun down. Put the gun down. Hold on. Rewind a little yep. bit, bro. Gotta rewind it. ATT tripping. Ah, oh, this is so unfortunate. Put the gun down. Put the gun down. She has a gun in her hand? Yeah. She whips out a gun, shot the cop. 22 shots fired. Oh, she shot the cop? Yeah. Oh my God, Can you buy that code three? Ma'am, ma'am, put the gun down! Put the gun down! Oh my God! He and he still waited. He could have just opened fire right away. Well, that was very fast. Ma'am, put the gun down, and and he had to reach for his. He had his out already. Wait, she's driving. She drives off. She could have ran him over too. And he's hit. He's hit. Hit. Did she and she died? She crashed and died, yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, man. Okay. It seems like it seems like most of these misunderstandings stem from little traffic stops. Mm -hmm. You know, apparently I guess he said whoever owns a car had warrants. Right. You know. She could have just said, fuck it. I'm just going to get arrested and I'm going to have to deal with this bullshit. I'm going to have to get a fucking bond. I'm going to have to get a lawyer. But at least you'd be alive. It's all paperwork. It's just all paperwork. At least you'd be alive. And did this? Did the cop make it? I don't know. I think he did. He said he was rushed into surgery. First of all, 
He looks like Peter Griffin. No, first of all, he he needs to get in shape too after he bounces back from yeah. this shit. Because you can't be, you can't have your body getting in the way of your job. If you're a cop, come on, man. Yo, in all fairness, that probably saved his life that he was that big. Really? Yeah, I would, I would, I would assume a little bit of uh, insulation. Yeah, a little bit of insulation for sure. Mm. But man, it's close range. Yeah, <sighs> that was a that was a nasty one from just a couple weeks ago. I'm surprised you didn't see it. No, it, man, I, I don't be seeing everything. There's yeah, there's, there's just, too much going there's on. There's so much, and and believe me, like I'm on the what did he said Instagram page. I'm on my Twitter. I'm checking a, a handful of people's Twitter feed just to yeah. see like what's going on in different realms. Right. Like you have, for example, James O'Keefe. He's he got another whistleblower calling in. He's about to um, air out CNN on some shit. Uh, CNN, uh, who was it? New York Times had to do a redaction on the Babylon Bee. They mm. they slandered him, said they pushed misinformation, but it's a satire page. Right, for fucking idiots. <laughs> so this James O'Keefe dude from uh, Project Probably Veritas, he just showed some more footage from the border of those the Donna facility mm-hmm. that he had got drone footage like two weeks prior from that. He's like, here we are two weeks later. They done expanded the Donna facility. Um, he's got more images. And the Raza is still silent. You know, this has been a running theme, man. Like, I'm not expecting Latino Hollywood to go against their party, right? Because they're obviously compromised. Latino Hollywood has already made their bed. They already told us how to vote. Um, they're going to stay silent for a little while longer while Joseph Br- uh, Breezy builds his wall, finishes Trump's wall. And he's having to do stuff that Trump was doing. He's having to undo all his bullshit executive orders. So now, now they say Mexico is going to participate and try to help out a little bit and protect their borders and, mm. and shit like that. But at some point, I'm sure they're going to send a whole bunch of money to Central America and, you know, fatten up some politicians' pockets. And then him and his cronies could split the bag. And meanwhile, the people in Central America are still going to be fucked, still need to escape. Still trying to get away from from that bullshit. I got. Let's see. Don't tip me something. I saw a just screenshot on my watch. Uh, how much time you got? What time you got to bounce? I think Marisol needs to leave in about ten, 10 minutes. minutes. I Perfect. believe. Perfect. So. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Uh, Don text me this today. FDA and CDC issued a statement regarding Johnson and Johnson COVID nineteen vaccine vacuna. Uh, we are recommending the pause in the use of the vaccine out of abundance of caution. As of 412, 6.8 million plus doses of the Johnson Johnson vaccine have been administered in the U.S. CDC and FDA are reviewing data involving six reported U.S. cases of rare and severe type blood type of blood clot of individuals and after receiving the vaccine right now, uh, these adverse effects appear to be extremely rare for now. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, uh, you know, I see it from both sides, man. I see it from both sides. For some people that were already anti-shot are like, see, this this is why. Y'all, y'all thought I was crazy for not wanting the shot? Here goes some proof. I ain't got no blood clots. That's what a lot of people are saying. I guess why I ain't got no blood clots? Because I didn't line up for that shit and try to be the first motherfucker in line. So I definitely hear you. I feel you on that. And then to all the people that are like, no, we need, we need as many people to get this, and that's the only way it's going to work, and this and that, um, they're upset that... They're like, it's only it's only a handful of cases, you know, shit happens. And, you know, what about the, the all the millions of other people that that were fine and didn't have uh, any issues? Uh, this is kind of on subject, off subject, though. But we're, since we we're talking about Mexico and I didn't know that they had said that they would maybe start protecting I, a little I believe more. so. Uh, I'll find it and we'll put it on the what did he say? Uh, shout out Gabe had sent me a, an interesting video of in an indigenous tribe somewhere in, I believe it was Mexico. Did it say Mexico? It was a long caption, but I read the whole story. But anyway, these, these people here are, the people and kids are pro- trying to protect their area, their little native village, tribal uh-huh. village uh-huh. land with uh, guns and such. Uh, as, as young as 6 to 15 are taking up arms, wooden weapons, toy guns, and clubs in defense of their own town against cartel in that area. Wow. And if you're over 15, they had uh, real guns. Uh, they have wooden sticks carved as AK-47s. Others had toy pistols, but children over the age of 12, sorry, had real firearms. It's fucking crazy here if you want to... What, what, where is this village? Uh, good question. In, it's like in Mexico or something? Or? Bueno, el grupo del Tíbulo Jardillos, este, lo que él pretende pues dominar las comunidades. 
Eso es lo que quieren hacer dentro de nuestro territorio y más que nada pues dejarnos en la miseria y apoderarse de nuestros recursos naturales. Pido al gobierno este, de Andrés Manuel López Obrador, ya que dice que está al lado del pueblo y dice que nos va a apoyar primero los indígenas. Eh, pues aquí estamos los indígenas, no hemos recibido un apoyo del gobierno federal. Y, 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 y eso que tenemos viudas, huérfanos y desplazados, y si no tuviéramos pues menos, pues voltear a ver a, a este lado el, go, el gobierno federal. O sea que, que no, no nada más se este, haga promesas, ya vienen las campañas, está Yahualtempa. Ok. So if you swipe, you can see the kids. Yeah, this is fascinating. Um, y, y muchas you. promesas que nos van a hacer. So he mentioned AMLO, the Mexican president. He mentioned the federal government, and he's basically saying, this, this is very interesting, because we're having the, the gun debate in America. Um, America has a rich history of militias, right? Especially Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the name? Seguin, where the town of Seguin is named after. He was a militia. So here's one way to look at this. These indigenous people, I guess, have been... Um, I don't know, maybe terrorized, he was mentioning, by right. the cartels. Mm -hmm. He said the federal government and the, uh, the new president, Obrador, 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 AMLO, that he said when he, when he was campaigning, I'm going to look out for the indigenous folk. I got y'all's back. I'm going to end the corruption. Uh, we ain't fucking with the cartels no more. And he basically saying, look, man, we done lost a lot of people already in our little community. Right. And we're not waiting on the federal government no more. We have our own little militia. And y'all gonna have a little bit of friction and problem if y'all come around these parts because everybody from 12 years and up is armed. And them, them are some, some legit ass guns they got. I don't know where they got them from. Yeah. I don't know if it was Operation Fast and Furious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if those guns were made in Edinburgh, Texas and smuggled into Mexico. Fuck, man. Somehow, some way. But how do you feel about it, Rob? How do you see that situation? Dude, it's sad as fuck. I, my only reply to, to Gabe was, um, and I, again, other people send me stuff too. I know, shout out Gabe a couple times, but uh, just he sends really good funny memes and articles. But when people send stuff, I try to reply. It's just, it's a fuck situation. It's a terrible situation. And I was thinking about this earlier while we were talking. Every time an election cycle comes around in the United States, you see these people like The Rock and George Lopez and these people that, go, it, it's just ebbs and flows, right? It feels like around this, for these, you know, six weeks, eight weeks, I'm going to really, you know, talk about it, tell you why you should do this and tell you why you should do that without really giving you their take on it, like their actual personal take on it, not their Hollywood take on it or their actual experience take on it. It's just whatever they think needs to be said. And we have all these other issues going around the world. And I don't know if it's because we're, we have close ties to Mexico in particular or because Texas itself is so close to, to Mexico. It's just it makes you really want to get down to the bottom of it, which we never will. But we could at least educate other people that are listening to us and trying to educate themselves through traditional terrestrial media, legacy media in a way that gives them, it lets them form a better idea of what's going on, why it's going on, how we can possibly pre prevent some of these things from happening in our country. Mm -hmm. Not to say get to that point, but when you have things like red flag laws, which I don't think we have enough time to get into. Yeah, next time. It could be something like that where, and to short and sweet, if you read it from the, from the website, from the White House website itself, it boils down to if you... A cop, a doctor, a friend, anybody says that I'm, uh, you feel like I'm incapable of he holding a gun, you can go to your local, uh, whatever. Um, snitch. Basically snitch to your court. Like, I guess it would be Hidalgo or whatever like, in this case. Rob has guns. And yeah, and I don't feel he's mentally capable of handling him and shouldn't yeah. have him. And they can just go in and confiscate him. It would be like, Rob has a lot of guns. I'm very concerned. Rob has a whole bunch of guns. And then they can just come take your guns. That's it. In the middle of the night. <sighs> wow. Red flag laws. So this is how... If I'm not mistaken, this happened in Germany. That's how Jews Jews were basically, just for being Jewish, they were put on these lists and weapons were taken away. Man, it's some bullshit. So, so you see these kids armed in, in this little indigenous town. These are probably ancestors of Mayans. Right. Um, they might even still speak some uh, other t you know, native tongues or whatever the word is. But one way to look at it is good for them. Good for them for fucking arming themselves because guess what they're not going to be doing? What they're not going to be doing is is fleeing their 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 plot of land, right? Trying to get to America, like please, Mr. Joe Biden, please 
paying coyotes, uh, you, you know, the kids and everybody getting molested and raped, women getting raped and stuff um, along this journey because you're being terrorized by and, and extorted by gangs and cartels. Instead, they said, man, we ain't running. And I don't know how big this community is, but it's like it, it goes further down in that description of saying the federal government, you know, hasn't supported the nine widows of this community, 14 orphans and 34 displaced. And it's just like, it's so fucked, man. Well, hey, man, I got to give them props. Um, They're doing their own, though. Yeah, They're holding their own. Yeah, militias, you know, I, I'm going to be careful what I say, but militias are important. I mean, you've seen, you know, it, it, it's murky waters as to what happened between the ATF and Waco. Mm -hmm. uh, there was some other shit called Ruby Ridge that happened, like, in the Northwest. Right. But this country has a rich history of, you know, people taking up arms to defend themselves from from tyranny etc and these these uh indigenous folk in mexico i'll do i'll try to dig in to see where exactly because it is fascinating and you know you can't be mad at these community organizers that right. are saying hey man we need to rise up we need to defend ourselves we have to be autonomous somehow some way we can't wait on politicians promises they're over there at los pinos you know they're the White House of Mexico, and they're not really coming over here to really back us up. And how many widows, how many orphans do you need until you say, fuck it, we getting some guns. So let us know how y'all feel about it. Uh, send us a comment. Uh, all the patrons, y'all, I know y'all have the patron app, and y'all can just uh, chime in on all the posts. Uh, hit us up on online. Please spread the word. If you dig the content, uh, don't forget, we also have Chingo Chats, if you're not into the po political talk, you know, the politics. Uh, but we re really appreciate you guys. Right now, Big Tech is censoring people. They'll kick you off one day for just bringing up a question or for being skeptical or... or, or, or for saying the wrong fucking buzzword and then the, the algorithm and the ai yeah bing 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 you get an email and you out of there and don't and they won't tell you why they won't really tell you why and we so, didn't get into the scientist video getting taken off youtube for but we'll get talk about that on friday as well so a lot to still get to on friday if you're not part of the tia sign up today and you'll get it on friday yeah and please tell a friend uh the podcast is growing the streams the downloads the plays they're going up uh i see comments all the time how do i tune in anywhere everywhere podcasts are available spotify youtube and of course patreon behind a paywall because that ensures our freedom of speech. Por favor, believe it. Thank you so much. Y'all take care. Talk to you soon. Sas.